Hey everybody, welcome to Open Every Box. I am Pete, welcome to the channel dedicated to modern retro video games, and we got the largest announcement ever on this channel. I am super happy. Let's get to it in television, Evercade, all of the details are right here. I've got a sit-down interview with Andrew from Blaze Entertainment Limited and Tommy Tellerico from Intellivision. We're going to sit down and chat about this amazing news. Hit that subscribe, smash that like button. Let's get to it right now. Hey everybody, we've got a huge announcement on the channel today. Two of my favorite companies are coming together and going to produce some exciting content. We are, of course, talking about Intellivision and Blaze Entertainment. They're coming together and we are going to be getting an Intellivision collection of games on the Evercade. And I've got two of the people behind this here with me today. I've got Tommy Tellerico, CEO of Intellivision, Andrew Byatt. Managing Director of Blaze Entertainment Limited. Welcome, guys. I am so happy to have you today on the show. Well, thanks for having us, Pete. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is great. Yeah, this is this is amazing. I can't believe I'm going to be a big part of you guys announcing this. I am more than I can't even contain my excitement. Well, really. I've I mean, been part like of nervous the, part all of week. That, part of that being, of course, is that you've been bugging both me and Andrew for the last year to say, hey, you guys, you guys got to do something together. So, so, you know, I called up Andrew. I'm like, we got to do something just so Pete stops bugging us. Yes, no, no. I am a bit of an egg. <laughs> you know what? This is for every retro gamer out there. I mean, I, this is, this is a gift to us all. So I am so excited. So I've got some few questions here. Um, that I'm going to ask, and uh, let's find out a little bit more about what this means for the Evercade. So, Tommy, the first question is coming to you. Why is the Evercade the perfect home for classic and television games? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I was a huge fan uh, of Evercade from the beginning, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it's interesting because there's so many, like, I have a main cabinet, you know, downstairs, I, uh, you know, you have stuff on your PC, you have stuff, you know, you have collections like on my PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation, it's like every time I get a new yeah. console, you know, oh, let's, let's play Pac-Man again, you know, or, or whatever, you have it on so many different things. But the beauty about what the Evercade offers is it's just, it's there like like I can't take my main cabinet to, to you know on on the road with me or or you know lying in my bed at night and I want to you know pick up and and play some of this stuff so so the the portability of Evercade and having it all legit in 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 one collect you know in in different collections that you can put in you know i think everybody who's into retro games loves supporting the retro you know community and you know and and so this is a a fantastic way to to support those companies but also you know to, i mean look how cool this looks i mean i, I know, got the, right? the red and the the thing and the way the cartridge just sticks right in I mean, so i mean i and the shoulder buttons and i, I mean i love everything about it and uh yeah so for us it was it was a no-brainer it's it, quite frankly it's an honor to be you know included in evercade when you have things like namco and data east and atari and all these amazing uh you know brands nostalgia vintage classic brands on there for us to be a part of that is it's a, it's a huge honor quite frankly yeah, it's definitely um, like I've said so many times. The the Evercade is m my product, gaming product of the year uh, last year, and it's a, you know, there's some stiff competition coming uh, this year. Wink, wink. <laughs> that uh, you know, but I think there's so much room in the market for this product. Andrew, what is it about the Intelligent Classic game library that makes it the perfect fit for the Evercade? Uh, I think. The Evercade kind of where we came from, we've we've kind of forged a position, I suppose, in the market where where we we're delivering quite unique and um and easy to use device, I guess, with with so much adaptability. So we've got our eighteen sixty bit content in there, some thirty two bit content as well now. Um but I suppose in television as a brand and, and its history and, and, and being a massive part of video game history for fans, 
Um, with the original console, we can deliver that. So, so people who love television, you know, they're going to really enjoy these collections. And then we've got on top of that, we, we've got a load of Evercade fans who are exploring this stuff for the first time. So yeah. I think that's how, that's the big thing about our console that you know, it's, all that we've got these um, these collections and people are finding hidden gems and stuff. Um, and, and they're 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 exploring these these first time. They've never played this game. They've never played that game. We've got all the recognisable hits, but I think. Delivering those additional additional stuff and, and lots of Evercade fans are going to enjoy this for the first time. Yeah, that's a, that's a great. And to add on that, Andrew, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Whereas, you know, like in television, isn't as big a name as Namco or Atari or, you know, you know, back in the day in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, in television owned 20% of the entire video game home console market, right? Atari, you know, was was the, the, the behemoth. Uh, but 20% was still, you know, still, uh, you know, significant. And back in the day, of course, you guys might remember, no one had like multiple consoles really. Like you either had an Atari or, but you knew somebody in the neighborhood who had an Intellivision or something. So it was widely known, but from a sales standpoint, it wasn't there. So I'm excited, you know, but those are people like in their late 40s, early 50s who would remember Intellivision growing up. So for me, it's very exciting too to kind of get like the millennial crowd and younger turned on to some of these games for the first time. This might be the first time they're hearing about in television. And again, that's the great thing about a system like Evercade. Um, you know, games that we love growing up, like, like Sensible Soccer is a perfect example. How many people actually played Sensible Soccer who were like, you know, under 40? right but what a genius amazing game and and so to have people discover it on the evercade is, is such a cool thing and so we're hoping you know people are going to experience night stalker and some of the other games that we're doing for the first time you know uh, on evercade so it's really great that that's such a great point because um like we we discuss discuss this on the evercast a lot is that I, one of the big things I love about the Evercade is I'm playing games I never played growing up or never played yeah. through my teenage or college years, like the Oliver Twins collection and, yeah. and those the games, Pico and that's stuff. exciting. I had never really played before the Pico, yeah. the Pico stuff, and that's pretty cool. I was going to say, when, when, we first, when we first launched the console, or when we first explored the console and started signing content for it, we, we kind of, um, I think we went after all the big stuff. Uh, we signed our Ataris and, and, and Namco and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think when we when we 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 wanted to find some more content, we signed the likes of Mega Cat, um, Pico, and, and, and as much for really good quality, interesting games. But they they kind of sell pretty much similar levels, and I think people we found I guess at that point that there was this really big thing about exploring and and finding these new games, finding these new experiences, which um, a, a retro crowd that are also interested. They're not, they're not just focused on those games they know and love when they were kids they want those but they also want these new experiences so yeah. that's been a really big big discover discovery really yeah that's yeah that again that's the beauty of the evercade is different gamers from different parts of the world discovering what was popular in other parts of the world like yeah. for me discovering what was popular in europe while i was growing up with the atari and the intelligent and the ColecoVision, finding about these these gems over in europe or other parts of the world has, has just been a fantastic experience and i can't say enough whenever i talk to people about the evercade that's the one thing i bring up don't think it's just about your dig dugs and and those types of games it's about all these things you're getting on the mega cat the pico and, and stuff like that so let's talk about the details yeah. what are we talking about here how many Andrew, how many games will be on the collection? Are there multiple collections coming? Yeah, well, um, so I'm, I'm massively you know, pleased to announce that we've got uh, first collection coming out, which will be the end of this year. Uh, and that collection will have 12 games on it. Um, and we've got plans for a second collection in, in 2022 with, uh, with another 12 games. So we're going to have a, a huge library, really, of Intellivision games to, to explore. Uh, for fans, and um, the first car, we, we're kind of confirming three games today. So we know that Night Stalker, which obviously 
nice title. Um, we've got Astro Smash. There's, there's the T-shirt. We've got Astro <laughs> Smash uh, coming on. We got Frog Bog also, which is which is going to be uh, on that first cartridge. We've got another nine games uh, to announce, which we'll be announcing, you know, in the next few months. So. Yeah, that's the start of it, really. I think it's going to be, as you say, really exciting for people to uh, to experience these games, both you know if they love the console. I mean, North America is you know stronger in North America. The European, you know, where where I think it was a bit rarer. We're going to see people exploring it for the first time there as well. So, um, I think we've all got these memories of growing up and, and, and having all these different consoles. And I think for many people in North America, in particular, Intellivision was one of those. Um, I think we're going to have that experience again if you discover it, which is great. That is excellent. I can't wait to do more speculation videos on what the other yeah, games will be. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, Tommy, how did you approach selecting the games for the Intellivision collections now? We can say there's there's two coming. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, we have, you know, a couple of, you know, in television uh, geniuses within our company. It's it's not just me who's so passionate about in television, but, uh, uh, you know, of course, we have a couple people who started working at in television, Mattel, in 1981, who are still with us. Um, and uh, one of our, uh, our, our, uh, our vice president of retro and production, uh, Paul, knows more about in television than I do. Um, and, and so we sat down and we said, you know, I mean, the challenge with in television games is that, you know, a lot of the games use the keypad, right? And, and, and we didn't want to go there in regards to, oh, do you have to pull up a keypad in order to, you know, mess around with the button? That, that's, a, that's a nightmare. So we kind of took a lot of those games uh, off the table because it's just not fun. We want to make sure that the experiences that we do bring to Evercade are amazing experiences and they're simple and they're easy and people can get into them right away, you know. So, so you know, unfortunately, like a game like Utopia, which uses like every single, you know, number on the keypad, uh, you know, we, we won't be you know, bringing stuff like that. But there's so many great things um, that can come and and, and I want to just blurt them out right now, but Andrew would kill me. Um, yes. but, <laughs> but but you know there's there's um, and the other thing we had to consider as well is the um, is a lot of in television games were two player only, right? So so some of the sports games, for example, you had to have a second player in order to you know uh, you know to even play the game and uh, so anyway so we had to we did a combination of things where this made sense you know the buttons and the and the even the shoulder buttons you know made sense uh to to port over and there's a lot and so you know in television originally had came out with 125 games and uh, as andrew mentioned you know we're going to be seeing 24 of those best of the best, uh, you know, coming to Evercade, uh, you know, out of the gate that we're announcing now, maybe, maybe even more down the road. So Pete, being the huge in television fan that you are, if you think about what are the games where you can use the disc and the side buttons a lot, or yeah. even for some instances, like Astro Smash, for example, which is a game that does use a keypad. You can the auto fires on the keypad, yeah. but something like that could be mapped oh, yeah. to Absolutely. one of the four buttons, right? So, knowing what you know about Intellivision, I think anyone who's an Intellivision fan can kind of go through the list and go, "Oh, okay, I know a ton of games that just use the disc and the buttons, or maybe one button on the keypad." Those are all the the biggest and best games that we'll be bringing. Awesome. Um, speaking about the controller uh, and the uniqueness of the Intellivision's innovative controller and a lot of their genre-defining titles, how are those uniqueness being cared for on the Evercade, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, uh, following on from what Tommy said, obviously we need to select those games that really work well, and, and I think, you know, that was the first conversation that we've had about this and, and making sure that there might be an element of setup in that game which is the keypad so we can call up a keypad but once you get into the game you don't want a single um a single instance where you need to pull up the keypad in the middle to do something that just doesn't work so be really careful to make sure when we're working on the emulation the way all this is going to work that 
you get that that great experience of, of you might pull up keypad set set some settings and then once you get going in the game everything is mapped to those six six buttons so the shoulder buttons the face buttons um, and that, that's the experience we're going to deliver so I think um, it's it's we're not going to say we're not going to say those games that don't work in that instance. so that, that's not really part of it and, and I mean, the great thing of working with, with, with Tommy and the team is, you know, they know this stuff backwards um, and they, they can help us and make a great experience uh, all along. From, 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 from the moment you put that part in, you should get a great experience. Excellent. Um, Evercade is known, well known in the community for bringing unreleased games to their collections, having these, like you said earlier, hidden gems. Can we hope to see some unreleased Intellivision games in each of the collections? Who wants to go yeah. first on this one? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll dive in and say yes, absolutely. You know, there were, there were a few games that, um, that never got released in the original 125, but then later on, like in the late 90s and early 2000s, they kind of finish the code or you know they would add them to a collection like the Intellivision Lives collection on PC or you know some kind of Xbox collection or, or whatever so so yeah we, we thought that would be fun as well to bring a couple of the ones that work because th there are actually a few pretty cool titles that you know that most in television fans don't even have never even played or heard of uh, the hardcore ones maybe but yeah so we, we thought that would be fun too hey let's bring a couple of these games that were never released officially and add those in uh, you know to each of the uh, the cartridges as well just because it's I, I think it's just kind of fun and interesting you know um, I want to thank you both for for joining me today and um, announcing this fantastic new addition to the uh, Evercade collection family I am I can't tell you how excited I am for this I want to thank you both can't believe this is happening to tell you the truth and I wish nothing but success for this collection and more to come in the future thank you so much I appreciate it Pete how fantastic is that news I can't believe I am going to have the opportunity to play Intellivision games on the Evercade I want to thank both Andrew and Tommy for giving me the opportunity to break this news announce it officially I want to thank you so much. This is a match made in heaven. I cannot wait to start playing these games this year on the Evercade. Once again, I'm Pete. Hit the subscribe, smash the like button, and tell me what you think of this great new partnership in the comments. And television games on the Evercade. You have an awesome day. Bye, everybody.